is the argument that the Atharis are the descendants, in a way, of the Salaf, and the Ash'ari Maturidis are the descendants of the Khalaf. Um, so again, um, in our tradition, we talk about the Aqidat al-Salaf, and we talk about Aqidat al-Khalaf. And we believe that both of those paths are totally valid. And many would say that Madhabu Salaf, Aslam. And Madhabu al-Khalaf, A'lam. Okay. Uh, what does this mean? Uh, as you recall, this refers to the attitude we take or the position that we take about the Mutashabihat. So do we interpret them or not? The Salaf say no need to do that. We do not do that. نُفَوِّدُ عِلْمَهَا إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى That is salim. That is a very sound position and a very correct position. And, but it is only salim if it is bila kayf. That's why we call it tafweed. We don't call it, you know, uh, you know uh, an understanding that is literal. We don't follow the zahir. But we leave those things like they are we leave them as they are and this is a high position this is in the end not necessarily it's not necessarily the most knowledgeable in terms of discursive knowledge but it's full of enlightenment and in the Sahaba and the Tabi'een they were extremely profound people. Whether you see that in them or not, don't think they were simple people. Uh, some people today, who maybe are simple people, they regard the Sahaba to be the same as themselves. That's not true. The Sahaba lived with the Prophet. They saw the Prophet. They touched his hand. They smelled his blessed fragrance. He looked upon them. You know, they were filled with light and understanding that I cannot imagine. And I don't think that you can either. You know, so Medhev Salaf is very strong, very respected. And Medhev Khalaf is an ijtihad that comes in the fourth century because of the fact that things have changed. Things have changed radically. People no longer understand that position of the Sahaba. And there are now big fitness. There are batilis. There are dahiris. There are people of esoteric interpretations, exoteric interpretations. There are anthropomorphists. There are all sorts of things. So now it's like, don't say tafweed to me. I will say this means that. Okay? And so then they say, no, now we will do tafweed. That we will give you a valid interpretation of this for your sake. Not because that is the ultimate statement, because it's not. The ultimate statement is the statement that cannot be spoken. It is the position of Imam Malik. It is the position of Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal. These are Arifun, and also Imam Abu Hanifa. Imam Abu Hanifa is the father of the Maturidi school. And Imam Abu Hanifa in Al-Fiqh Al-Akbar and in some of his other writings, his aqidah is beautiful. And it is very much a Salafi aqidah, by the way. <coughs> you know, he's very, very careful in everything he says. But <coughs> the, the Maturidis and the Ash'aris are really interesting to compare them. But the Maturidis are always very shari. Whereas the Ash'aris, it's like they're very haqiqi in many ways. But uh, the, the Khalafi position is a sound position. And today it is extremely useful to us because of the fact that we must make sense of all of this to the world. We live in a time where people have to know the structure of reality. In the past, the structure of reality is not a problem. Okay? But in the modern age, when you talk about evolution, DNA, you know, the expanding universe, point universe, thermodynamics, uh, quantum theory. It's like, I have to know about the structure of reality. 
You know, I have to know what to say about that. So here, then we have to get the full theological tradition, and in my belief, we have to even add to that. Because there are other things in the Hakiki tradition of Islam that now explain to us things that, I mean, why were they told in the first place? Because of the fact that today, I have to be able to open that door somewhat. And, you know, then, I mean, today, if we talk about things like Marathi al Wujud, the different levels of existence, you know, this changes everything. And it's very important for modern physics, extremely important for quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics itself uh, is based primarily on the Buddhist concept of the eight. If you study the history of modern science, you'll see that. That the, the, some of the great people who've won the Nobel Prize in atomic physics, they have been inspired by Buddhism and its vision of the structure of reality. What about us? But well, we don't talk. We don't write. You know, and we are a sleeping giant. You know, and may we come to life, and may we learn our tradition, and we should be a vanguard in everything that we do. Be it me like to other. Um, you know, is that an adequate answer to your question? <laughs>